we're going to be taking this Mantis Den Acrylic Enclosure and turning it into this super cute mini reptile terrarium for Wish, our reptile rescue Chinese house gecko. And this is how we do it. Now Wish, our Chinese house gecko, really is a reptile rescue and comes with quite the story. The story is he came to the UK by mistake in a shipping container. It had come from China into a food factory here in the UK. The food factory employees contacted Cheshire Reptile Rescue. Cheshire Reptile Rescue then contacted me because we I do am. have experience with yeah. wild stowaway reptiles. The authorities said, you either keep him as a pet because he's not a threatened species, he's not endangered, or we're just going to destroy him. By destroy him, they were just going to put him in the freezer. And that's where Wish emits into our reptile collection. Now, for the past few months, Wish has been in this little jar enclosure solely to quarantine to make sure he's perfectly fine. It's small enough where he can find his food. It's small enough where he can work his way around without getting too stressed. But now it's time for his upgrade. Cue in the Mantis Den enclosure. This super durable, lightweight enclosure that comes flat packed to your door will be absolutely perfect for Wish. This front opening mesh topped enclosure is going to give Wish more than double the amount of space that he's used to now. I can't wait to see him in there at the end of this video. The first thing we have to do is clean the enclosure properly with reptile disinfectant. We've got a load of oil and grease all over our hands and that's now on this enclosure. So we want to make sure it's perfectly fine so that the silicon can adhere to this enclosure without too much trouble because the next step is to silicon all the bottom edges. For this we use marine grade silicon which is 100% silicon and is aquatic safe so it's going to be reptile safe. This is going to be a tropical enclosure and it is going to have water and moisture and humidity within it. This is not a waterproof enclosure so we need to do this and need to do this really well. We run our fingers across all the edges to smooth them down and leave it to cure for 24 hours. For the background of this enclosure we have four different options that we can do and it's trying to find whichever works best for a small enclosure like this. We can do the traditional tropical background scene where we'll use the expanding foam, we'll carve the foam, we'll cover it in silicon and then cover it in dry substrate just like this one here. We could also do a shaped polystyrene background covered in tile grout and then acrylic paint just like this one. We could mix all of those together and do every single different topic all in one big enclosure just like this one. We can really get creative when it comes to something like this one. We have done full instructional videos for all of these different backgrounds within these enclosures. If you want to see more, I'll leave the playlist directly above right now and also linked in the description down below. If you'd like to see more build videos like this in the future, it might be worth hitting that like button and subscribing. If you hit that notification bell and click all notifications, you'll get notified next time we do upload a video. However, all of these enclosure backgrounds do cost a little bit of money. They are cheap and DIY if you're doing it on a big project like that. However, once you've bought all those pieces and put them all together, created it, spent the time on it, it would have been financially viable just to buy a background. Cue in an Exoterra background. This is one that we found on Facebook Marketplace for £3. That's about $4.50 in the American money. All we have to do is measure the background of the enclosure and cut it to shape choosing which part of this actual background panel that we want. It's a 45 centimeter tall, 30 centimeter wide panel, but we only need a small amount for this one. We notch out the back corners of the enclosure to allow for the joining brackets within the enclosure. We adhere it into the enclosure using marine grade silicon and allowing it to cure for the required time. Already you can start to see it coming together. To start off the inside of the enclosure, we have to start with the drainage layer. For this, we're going to be using the BioLife Bioactive Filtration System. It's just hydro balls that we use and it helps to replicate the water table in the natural habitat. We have to give this stuff a clean because it does come extremely dusty, so we just rinse it underneath cold water and then put it straight into the bottom of the enclosure. You can make it as deep as you want. On top of that, we're going to be adding a window screen mesh. We're going to be using this as a barrier between the hydro balls and the substrate layer so the substrate doesn't get into the water table of this enclosure. For substrate layers, we're going to be using our own tropical mix. This is a mix we've perfected over the years. It's great for holding humidity within the layers of the substrate, slowly releasing it off throughout the day. It gives off a clean, healthy humidity, so everything that's in that humidity, all the microbiotic bacterias, 
are going to be extremely healthy for the animal that's actually in this enclosure. It's got various amounts of charcoal inside it to help neutralize the pH levels to help it make it that little bit cleaner. And it's extremely easy and cheap to make. If you want to know how to make it, I'll leave a video card directly above right now. I'm going to slope the substrate layers towards the back of the enclosure, making it a little bit deeper at the back. This is because the plants that we want to put at the back of the enclosure need that deeper substrate to be able to root really, really well. The deeper substrate also helps to hold the humidity within the substrate layers, slowly releasing it off throughout the day. We start by adding our first plant, which is this amazing little weeping dew style plant. This will grow really long, really viney and quite quick, allowing for loads of extra coverage throughout the actual enclosure itself, giving the gecko that is going in here a lot of variety to go through. We're going to place it in the back end of this enclosure, just up here. So we need to dig down really nicely and get a nice firm root hold. We can always clear up the mess directly afterwards. That's not a problem. We place it in really nicely nice and compact down as far as as good as it can go and then pack it in with the substrate around it with that first plant already in it's time we can start adding in various little bits of log work to help train this plant to go up and around all the log work can you get these logs from outside because all of these logs do look natural yes you can there's various ways of treating this. You can go to a place outside where there's no fertilizers, no insecticides, no pesticides, no farmland, where farmland is gonna be getting kept on top of. You don't want any of that sort of stuff to be within the substrate layers, which will get absorbed into the plants over time. No dog feces, and you can pick up anything that's a hardwood. The hardwood just lasts an awful lot longer within these enclosures, in these higher humidities. Something like oak and beech and birch really do quite well. You can even get some that have got really nice bits of lycra on, just like this one. When you get them home, you can either freeze them, give them a good clean, you can freeze them, or you can stick them in the oven, 180 degrees Fahrenheit for around about 20 minutes, does the job perfectly fine. Leave them to cool naturally, and then they're gonna be perfectly suitable to go inside your enclosures. Once that's complete, we have various, again, bits of moss that we have achieved from outside. We took away a little tiny pinch, just like this, and we grew it in our facility just here. And that sole purpose was to allow all the native bugs, all the native bad bacterias to get off the growth. The piece that we picked up, we don't actually use that piece. We pick up and we use all the pieces that grow from that little piece that we actually did pick up originally. We have a little cutting of another weeping drew. Now this one is gonna traipse up over the top of all of the logs and you can see how well rooted it is. This was water propagated in our facility. We have another one to go over this back corner just here. Dig a little hole. Put the plant in the hole, cover with more substrate. We give it a really good water. This gets all the soil off the top of the leaves that may still be there. It rehydrates all of the moss that we do have in the enclosure and it starts a bacterial bloom. What is a bacterial bloom? That's where all these plants, all the soil, is start giving off loads of different bacterias. Those bacterias are not the best. You need to leave these setups for a good few weeks to allow that bacterial bloom to really blossom. It gets all the bad bacteria out and then the ecosystem of microbiotic, really enriching bacteria starts to bloom. This starts to bloom because of the aid of our cleanup crew. For the cleanup crew, we're gonna be using our springtail colonies. We're gonna fill these up with a little bit of water and just pour them straight into the enclosure. These wonderful creatures help to break down any bacteria, any moss, anything that's really not necessary within these enclosures and turns it into soil fertilization, which is only gonna benefit these enclosures. We dot a few of them around and then we leave them to repopulate over the next coming weeks. Now Wish, the Chinese house gecko that is going into this enclosure, he has a staple diet of Pangea with fruit flies. So we need to make a feeding ledge capable of holding the Pangea. We're gonna be using the leftover background pieces from the spare segment. We cut off a small corner with one of the flat edges. We shape it with a blow lamp. We heat up the end of a metal rod and mount it into the background piece, making a tiny little hole for a tattoo ink cup to sit in. That's where the Pangea is gonna go into. We then use some hot glue and glue it to the side of the enclosure that's gonna be away from the heat source. 
we then hit the like and the subscribe button on this video if you want to see more. We add Wish the Chinese House Gecko into her new paradise. And that's another build video on Northern Exotics complete.